So let's talk about proxy use and do I support it? I actually do support using proxies, but there is different types of proxies. So it's, you know, in case law, as an IP attorney, I can tell you it has to be case by case by case. A, a case of somebody downloading music is different from somebody else downloading music. Like each of these things is case specific. Now there are websites who make a lot of money. You can go on Etsy, Alibaba, and they sell proxies with the idea that, you know, it's supposed to trick you into believing it's real. And this then allows people to maybe trade these proxies or sell them as if they were real. So these are called counterfeits. So counterfeits are a type of proxy. Counterfeits are not separated. I, the way I look at it is here, we have a big you know, group of things that we can call proxies. They range from you know, writing a piece of paper, put, you know, printing something and sticking on a, a regular magic card to a point that like now we're just printing using a you know actual printing facility to try to make a fake magic card as close as possible which I, in my opinion would be the counterfeits counterfeits are proxies right a proxy means that it's a replacement it's something that instead of getting the real card you will use a proxy so do i think counterfeits should be allowable no I think at the end of the day, if you don't actually want to trade the card away, there's no reason you want to make it as realistic to the real card as possible. Now, the argument might be, oh, well, you know, I need it to be realistic looking because then, you know, people won't call me out on it. I think overall, we just have to be more accepting of proxies and gameplay. You know, when you talk about these older formats, um, Alpha 40 and so on, I can't see people I, I think those formats need proxies. Otherwise, they, you, nobody, there wouldn't even be enough players to play the format because the cards are so rare. A proxy, in my opinion, should be an obvious proxy. It shouldn't be, you know, created with the idea of selling it. So you, you look at Etsy, you look at eBay, you look at Facebook, and you, you see so, so many people, you know, selling proxies. I believe truly in homemade proxies, which again, assuming that you're not like, you don't own a print shop, are clearly fake and they're clearly usable. That type of proxy I can get behind. The proxy that they're trying to sell on Etsy and stuff where you're trying to sell it as if it's real or it's a high quality counterfeit, that I believe should be illegal. Now you might say if that's illegal, if you're an IP attorney and that's copyright infringement, which you know, when you, so in law, right, you, you have fair use, you have how close is this to the original? Now we can talk about text, we can talk about the artwork, we can talk about the mana symbols, you know, that are trademarked. But I don't think anyone disagrees that when you're trying to make a, a proxy look like it's real, then that should be illegal, right? Because then that person would be selling a counterfeit good. Now on the other spectrum, if you're just kind of printing out cards yourself, for a lot of these dead card games where nobody's printing new cards out, they, they actually just play like Inuyasha is a card game. I own all the original cards, but a lot of people don't. So they print out, they have websites where they print out the cards and then they play against each other. And that's how you play these dead card games where it may be very difficult to get a, the, the physical cards and that keeps them around. So do I think all proxies should be allowed? No, I think when you talk about counterfeiting for the purpose of counterfeiting, that should not be allowed. That's to make money, that's greed. That's not because you love the game, it's because you wanna make money and sell them as real. Okay, that's why you're trying to get the, the commas and everything exactly right. Now, when I see a player who, let's say they don't have a grim monolith and they just want to print out their grim monolith, they have an anime picture or something like that, that's, that opens up a whole nother thing because the question is like, who owns the anime picture? Who owns that? Who owns that artwork? Uh, the typical proxy is when people use other people's artwork and they put it in a card, but the question is, okay, what about the person who made the artwork? So in one thing that we can look at, for example, and this is a very crazy example. If you don't know about the artist gallery and there are certain uh, cartoons. I wish I think Steven Universe or something like that that are very very picky on fan art. 
So if they see a fan art of these, actually I have a long list of, of, of them uh, because it's their creativity, it's their property. So this is what we're gonna talk about licensing, right? So if a, let's say in Yasha, the, their owners are like, hey man, we want you to make some fan art, we're good with that. And then, they, and then over years, people are making fan art, they're selling fan art at these anime galleries. Um, when you go to an anime convention and you look at the the artwork, I bet you 95% of it is going to be based on whatever is popular that day. Uh, probably, I don't, I don't know any popular, Spy X Family, right? There'll be a lot of artwork. Well, some artists, some creators, some owners are okay with that. Just like Nintendo on the reverse side was not okay for a long time and slowly figuring out that this actually helps our brand. But some brands are not okay with that which means you cannot do fan art. And that's up to the brand. So not only, so at some point in time, we have to look at Wizards of Coast and ask them, hey, what are you okay with? And how far along can we make the proxy? So right now they shut down that card conjurer. To my knowledge, that guy was not making any money. Now, what's a cool project to show? Did he benefit from it some way? I'm, I'm sure he did, but he wasn't making any money from it. There are websites out there that do make money, you know, from proxies and allowing you to make proxies. Maybe they're behind paywalls, as the guys mentioned. And that is kind of somewhere in the middle. So like, A, we have a high realistic proxy, which are basically a counterfeit. That that would be illegal, by the way. B, we have like a, a some type of proxy making website that charges money. So that's on this end of the spectrum that gets a little bit more gray where you're making money by charging people to make proxies. Okay, so there's profit, there's greed, there's a reason, there's a monetary financial reason you're doing this. And then we have a website that doesn't, and it seems like Wizard of Coast right now has drawn the line here. The website that does not make money, I don't think that should be where the line is drawn. I think it should be more along the lines of websites that do charge money. So if you are a fan art, you wanna make fan art, and you're not gonna charge people money for it, then go ahead. Like for my images that we make, that I put on my Discord channel, yeah, feel free to use them on your altars or anime, whatever you guys want to do, right? Because I make it, I give you the right, the license, even though I own the copyright. So Wizard of Coast can still own the copyright and trademarks to its cards, but give the user, give its fans a license in the fan policy, which we'll talk about very soon. So that fan policy is very vague, and I understand why they did it that way, but it has to be clear, like what, where is the line between proxies? Is the is what you're saying that all proxies are not allowable? Proxies where it's created and the guy's trying to make money is not allowable, and they're trying to sell the proxies like an anime convention, for instance, um, when they're selling fan art, right? Um, or, hey, or counterfeits, you know, on the, all the way on the other side, counterfeits for proxies. Legally, you gotta case law test it. You gotta test each of these cases to see what Wizard of Coach will push back on and what they won't. Until like a case actually comes to court where people, you know, make these arguments, we won't know because the copyright law, like in, again, if you have ever gone to an anime convention and you go to Artist Gallery Alley, you know 95 to 99% of the f original artwork is just a copy. It's just a fan copy of uh, the of a popular TV show. Nobody has original artwork of their own characters because they simply wouldn't sell. And what and I, I'm going to bring a list because I used to go. We used to go to artists um, anime conventions. This was obviously before COVID, and there was a list of um, certain um, certain uh, shows that if they found out you that they would shut you down. Um, I think it would be very interesting to share that list. I don't think any of you guys know about it, but in in terms of us, you know, who make fan art and stuff there are certain uh, characters that you don't want to do because then the, they will actually sue you. And that's their right to do it. Uh, and it's a very interesting, I view proxies very parallel to, uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh, it's called or Oricana or something, Oricana. And it's acceptable. It's even acceptable in Yu-Gi-Oh. So even we, we have two different games, 
Magic can draw its line here, Yu-Gi-Oh can draw its line here, and Pokemon can draw its line here. Not every game has to draw the same line, and where the line is drawn is via, you know, do they sue you if you did this, do they sue you if you did that, and it's basically a case-by-case -case example. But yeah, it's fascinating because in the art, in the uh, fan art, there are certain uh, very famous uh, animations where the creator of that animation or the owner of the copyright does not want you to make fan art of their fan art or use use their characters in any way. Hi guys.